It's Tuesday, April 29th, 2014. I'm Ariel Nunez and from our CBS studios in New York City, welcome to the 404. Hey everyone, welcome to the 404 show. I'm Jeff Bacalar. And I'm Justin Yu. Help me welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome. It's been over two weeks Left a gaping hole in my heart, and yeah. I'm sure yours as well. Help me welcome back to the show, Justin Yu. <sighs> welcome back, Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. I'm welcome back. back. Thanks to both of you guys. <laughs> You're quite welcome. It's been hell not having you here. Yeah. I need you to know that. So many people quit because I left. I yeah. left two weeks ago. Come it's back true. 14 days later, and it's a ghost town in this office. Literally, like 80% of the office is no longer working in this building. Aria, we're not going to tell them what's really going on. No. <laughs> We'll yeah, it it's crazy, right? right? They're all good. They all yeah. quit. Everyone they must left. have loved me They're so like, much. Oh, Justin's gone. Well, there's nothing <laughs> else to live for. F this life. So yeah, you have that kind of effect on people. Yeah. Uh, but now that you're back, the world can continue to to spin. Yeah. How was it? Where did you go? Who did you see? Oh, what man. did you do? What did you eat? What it did you so smell? Cool. What was the culture like? What was everything like? Well, I want to talk to you guys about traveling because before this trip, I had never done any kind of traveling before. I had to get my passport for this trip. You you never left the country? I did when I was like 10 years old. Where'd you go? I went to China. Oh, got, so you did. Yeah. Got what? sick right off the plane. Oh, I remember, I remember. Yeah. And then for the rest of the two weeks, I was out. Gotcha. Okay. So aside from that, I haven't been out of the country besides Mexico, which you don't need a passport for. You don't? I no. think you do now. You now just you haven't do? been there in a while. Oh, yeah, I guess I really <laughs> haven't been traveling. <laughs> After 9-11, you, basically, you need a passport to go to Canada Since now. 2001. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I actually had to get my passport for this, and it was a really long trip. I was gone for two weeks, went to Singapore first, then South Korea, then Beijing on the way back. So cool. Have you been to any of those places? Uh, no, I have, no. I haven't been to any of them either, but it was awesome. Yeah. I really, really liked it. I think uh, Singapore was my favorite. Do you think they're doing it better there? Singapore feels like, uh, these are actually photos of Indonesia, where, which is like an hour uh, shuttle away from, okay. from Singapore. But yeah, that's, that was the first stop on the trip. And it, it feels like a city that was built in the last 10 years. Oh, that's it's cool. It's very, very modern, but super humid. Like weather-wise, it was the most torturous out of all three locations. What, what do you mean super humid? It was super humid. Oh, yeah. yeah I was it, was say, it was 95 like... degrees with 100% humidity the oh, entire time there. Oh, God. And that's that... pretty much how it is all year round. Oh, that makes before. me sick. I know. We wouldn't have been happy traveling there together. <sighs> yeah. It's you just... and I are the same in terms of like tolerance for temperature. Right. And I hated it. Even with shorts and a t-shirt on it just feels gross right when you walk out of the door so instead of like hot dog vendors they just have guys handing out gold bonds yeah and yeah. umbrellas yeah oh, but it's kind of cool though because it does rain pretty much every 20 minutes there okay um so it's kind of cool there's a lot of motorcyclists on the road um and scooters and that's how they get around in addition to cars of course but on the freeway there's actually places that you can pull off to on the side of the road that are marked with umbrellas for every time it rains that have, you know, there's like an overpass and there's an awning and stuff for you to hang out underneath. So that was really cool. Okay. Um, and then while we were there, we actually took a little miniature vacation uh, to Indonesia, which is what these pictures are. Um, so amazing. Peony found this coconut plantation that was converted into a resort. So we stayed there for uh, a day. It was so cool. Before going on this tropical Indonesia trip, I had no idea that places like this actually existed. I mean, you guys are pretty well traveled. You went to Hawaii. And yeah, you, you, when you say that you didn't know it, it existed, what do you mean? I mean, I realized that places like this existed in the world. I just never thought I would make it there. Everything pretty much oh. looked like a Corona commercial. Oh, <laughs> you're just talking about like the beach. Just the beach, yeah. Okay. Like not yeah. dirty beaches. Right. Like coming from Orange County and then New York after right, that, right. like all I've seen. Yeah, is I mean, the beaches, beaches on the East Coast aren't amazing i mean they're like beaches hawaii are nice yeah like but yeah Caribbean compared to hawaii or like places where you could see your toes in the ocean right 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 like this was amazing so yeah i was like just chilling out in a hammock it was really nice look at you nothing like hanging out on the beach with a nice refreshing <laughs> can of coca-cola <laughs> <laughs> that should be a beer bottle for anybody else <laughs> what, what's the what was but the, corona, what was the corona slogan huh your dream what was it oh, your beach yeah you find your beach find your, you found your beach yeah. right there with a corona <laughs> i mean coca-cola they ran out yeah. of odulis 
I'm sh- it's O'Doul. <laughs> I call it O'Doulies. <laughs> Is that can I live? No, it's no, you can live. <laughs> apparently, terribly. No, Singapore is great though. Like what I really liked about Singapore is the cleanliness of it. Coming directly from New York to that country is amazing. Right. So the government actually regulates the littering there. And so that if you go there, you'll see signs. I didn't take a picture of it, but you'll see signs that have a list of things that you can't do. One of them is littering. The other is like spitting. No you spitting. You can't spit. You can't spit. You can't throw a cigarette butt on the ground. Well, no gum or anything like I that. I agree with that. But get this: it's punishable by public beating in Singapore. So said the folks that we stayed with. So if you spit on the ground, yeah, that's thirty lashes. Yeah, done by machine, no less. I tried to find a video of it, but apparently, the, anyone in Singapore is invited to go to these punishments, and they all take place in one public arena, like gladiators. What kind of government is that called? And it's all done by machine, so that they can actually regulate how much pain and the force of yeah, media. yeah, exactly. Well, at least they have those priorities in check. I mean, if New York had something like that. This would probably be a lot cleaner. The beatings would never end yeah. if we had that. <laughs> It'd just be like a line of people. <laughs> it would be like going to the DMV, yeah. but for beating. I think that's the thing that I that I recognize the most is just the level of cleanliness in areas compared to New York City. But think about how many people are here. Right. I mean, I know these are big cities too, Yeah. but there's a lot of people in one concentrated area. Right. Here. So you're going to get some trash. Yeah. Like in Korea, for example, the, uh, the subways are cleaned every single night. Do they even do that in they New They clean them. I don't know if it's definitely not every night. Probably not. And not as thorough either. There was like a video on the uh, subway rail that we were taking of how they actually clean it every night. And it looks like they just dunk it into a giant vat of soapy water. Interesting. Like those guys in all white hazmat suits that are like power spraying every seat and corner and stuff. That's pretty cool. Oh, so nice. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. Oh, those hazmat suits. Just clean. Clean's good, man. I'm with you on that. We have a dirty ass freaking city. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I really like that about uh, Singapore. Also in Singapore and Korea, quiet cars. Like the other thing I noticed was just the level of noisiness is way lower in those two places. At you least think that's a cultural thing? Definitely. Yeah. While we were there, I went to Korea uh, for a wedding, which is why I traveled there to Asia in the first right. place. And uh, we were there with about 15 of our friends scattered across the country but we all met up in korea and while we were there you know we hadn't seen each other in a while right off the plane like we were laughing on the bus and stuff and we actually got shushed really like this old man that was sitting in front of us turned around and was like shh on the bus (laughs) whoa yeah so apparently in korea uh they don't like foreigners talking really loudly in public which i guess i kind of understand some xenophobia there yeah but it's kind of nice. Like the, the noise level is really, really low. They all sound like they're all scared of everything. Who in Korea? Yeah, like I can't have someone speaking loud on the bus. I yeah, have to shush them. No jaywalking in Korea. Someone got in our group got in trouble for jaywalking. What happened to them? They get beat, caned. No way. Put to death. Put to death for jaywalking. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is like uh, the, I think the problem with those places is that like for example, like the drug laws there are very, very strict in Korea and Singapore. Uh, marijuana, same level as heroin. And you'll probably get beheaded. If, beheaded? No, I'm just, I don't know what the punishment is. <laughs> yeah. But it's probably well, really We had bad. to chop Larry's head off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Larry <caught> Chu. <laughs> we had to chop Larry Chu's uh, head off. Larry Park, yeah. <laughs> Man, uh, that's, that's pretty extreme. Yeah. I don't know if I can get behind the, the decapitation for pot, but yeah. I'm with them on the shushing. Yeah. I really liked Korea, though. Like, amazing food. I feel like before I went there, I assumed all Koreans just eat like Korean barbecue and well, that's fried chicken. Pretty uh, racist. Obviously, that's a you. really small amount yeah. of the food that's prepared there. So, you know, obviously, I'm joking. Peony's Korean, so we ate a bunch of. So, what are we great looking at food. here? What kind of food is this? Uh, this is all different kinds of kimchi. Kimchi. Yeah, which is like the fermented cabbage with like fish sauce and uh, hot pepper and stuff like that. So, okay. this is like a bunch of different kinds. Um, treat you okay? You have any issues? No issues whatsoever. Good for you. Yeah, I was actually really in your nervous blood. about that. Yeah, because you know the first time I went there, I got such a bad stomach flu. This time, I was really nervous. Right. Loaded up on tums and everything like that. We were really careful to eat in um, like sort of touristy, like you know, like highly rated areas. Yeah. Um, in Beijing, especially, we were really nervous because there's lately been a lot of food scandals there. Scandals? Yeah. Have you read any about any of this stuff? Uh, no. <laughs> food scandals? Yeah. I, I don't think it's pervasive across the whole country, but me and Peony read a bunch of articles beforehand that made us super paranoid. Like uh, a couple years ago, there was this scandal about 
the street foods. Mm. Like, there's a lot of street carts there that serve bugs? Like, noodle Don't they soup. Eat bugs there? Yeah, they, they, there's like you know novelty foods like scorpion eating Sc- oh, and things scorpion. like that. It's not super common. That's like touristy stuff. Oh, okay. But the scandal was that um, someone videotaped a street vendor harvesting oil from the gutter. So the video was of this woman who was taking oil out from the sewage system in front of popular restaurants. And I guess the for reason a fire for that or to cook, for, to cook with. Hmm. And so she would distill the oil and filter it out, probably add her own carcinogens and stuff. Yeah. Because oil is expensive if you're having to like cook all day. Okay. And and stuff like that like really made us nervous. It's disgusting. Like, you know, kids were I read an article about a bunch of kids dying from fake milk. Fake that had milk? had melamine inside of it. What? Them. Yeah, which is basically just plastic. Oh. Yeah, food scandals like that were... Are, Run rampant? Yeah. I don't know if it's bad PR or what, but Beijing and China in general has had some really terrible stories. Well, I guess you learn... food prep. I guess you learn something like how to properly prepare yeah. for a trip just... Just eat spam for four years. Yeah, straight, pretty much. And you'll be set. You'll have that iron stomach. Yeah. And there was always McDonald's everywhere, too. <laughs> really? McDonald's yeah. and Subways are across the world, man. That's super depressing. Yeah. And then bottled water, too, right? Like, anytime you guys travel, I'm sure you just buy bottled Depends water. Depends on where I'm at, yeah. Yeah, how do you make that judgment, though? Because in Korea, we didn't drink bottled water. But in China, we did. Like, is that racist of us? Like, little, how do you make that I mean, you're, that's a little judgy. Uh, like, I know in Mexico, you're right. not supposed to drink the water. Well, you find out. You do research. Yeah. You know? You find out where you can drink water and where you can't. Right. Most, I feel like most of Europe, you can. Yeah. I was in a, the DR, and we got there, and they're like, don't drink the water. Oh, they tell you there? Yeah. They're they like, hey, you. this is a beautiful island. Don't drink the water. Yeah. And we're like, okay, we're not going to. What gonna about go. Jamaica? Did, they, did you drink the water there? Um, I didn't risk it. I mean, probably, I, I don't know if it's good or bad. I just didn't try. But Because yeah. when I went to the Philippines, I, I had like ice from tap water and oh. I got super sick. Oh, that's yeah. so so yeah, you got to be careful with the ice too. Yeah. Like ice don't for yeah, that's major major deal. I mean, that's hard to escape because even if you're not drinking the actual water, they still wash food in the water. Yeah, ice mm-hmm. is another big Yeah, deal. but if they wash food, that? that's fine. I mean, I think that's fine it gets, you know, cooked. That's yeah. okay. Right. But with the ice, you can ask like what is where's this ice coming from? Right. Yeah. If they say it's filtered, then it's, it's it should be okay. Yeah. I was really really paranoid about that. But it's ridiculous uh, we have to worry about water. Yeah. I mean, in Beijing, we had to worry about everything. There was like a bad story about um, like bao, you know, like basically like little bread balls okay. being made out of cardboard, like 80% cardboard and 20% flour. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, wh- what kind of stuff were you, re- were you reading like really reliable stuff? Or yeah, just- no, these were like big scandals that were coming out since 2008, like around yeah. the time the Olympics were happening in Beijing. A lot of these stories were, were happening to the point where now a lot, you'll see if you go to Beijing, there's a lot of import stores okay. of stuff like milk from Korea. And those are really popular because parents just it's don't want to feed their kids the food that might Interesting. be tainted. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, really scary stuff like that. But luckily, we didn't get sick. Uh, ate a ton of really good food. Peking duck is like the thing to eat. Yeah, it sounds good. So we got it there, and like that. the chef actually comes out and like slices off all the fat for you and everything. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Really cool. like Peking duck. Excellent. One thing I really liked, uh, Ariel, you're really gonna love this, is that in Korea, the vinyl culture is freaking crazy mm. right now. There's like this revival of vinyl, um, and there's stores everywhere. So look, check this out. This is just one of the stores that. Um, a bunch of friends and I went to. This nice. is actually located inside a subway oh, that's in cool. uh, a place called Itaewon in Korea. And this is just one of the walls. This is a four-walled enclosed store, so you can see the door right there in the middle. Sure. Mm-hmm. All four walls, just as much vinyl, like digging for hours. What were the uh, prices like? That's the thing is when I went there, I kind of figured that, oh, man, like we're going to find some deals or whatever. They're not no idea like what this stuff is worth. Mm -hmm. But with like Discogs.com that's out right now, like pretty much find whatever anything is worth online. So like moderately priced, I'd say like 15 to 20 bucks Mm -hmm. and then up for a record. But really good condition. They know how to take care of this stuff. Is anything like really cheap there? Food. Just food? Definitely spent like not like half as much money as I normally do on food compared to New York there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Um, we went to this place, uh, if you're looking at the video, this is a mountain that exists right in the middle of Seoul, and they oh, built cool. a city around it. It's called Namsan. Mm-hmm. And uh, you take sort of like a people mover yep. up to the top of the mountain, really similar to like Roosevelt Island, you know, like um, you like go to the top of this mountain and then hike your way down. It's really beautiful. Another huge record store. It's funny, I was wearing my Phantom of the Opera hat, <laughs> and when I went in there, they freaked out, and they were like, oh, 
you got to buy these records. <laughs> Both of these records, $100 a piece. <laughs> what? Yeah, sealed, original copies, Korean pressings from like the mid-1980s. They're probably they worth $100. They really know what they have yeah. there. Yeah, it was amazing. There's like so much digging there. Cool. Um, yeah, That's one cool. thing I really like too is that uh, they're really into LP bars there in Korea. So mm -hmm. we went to a lot of those that it's literally just, you know, like a, you go into a bar, the walls are lined with shelves that have records stacked you all up in there. just play and hang out. The DJ just plays them all. You can't actually like rifle through the records. Oh, okay. Yourself, but it's just like an audiophile's dream bar. That's neat. Yeah. And they play the full LP, like mm -hmm. the whole album? Yeah, they'll play like a full LP or it'll be like a DJ just playing singles, whatever oh, okay. the guy feels like. Nice. Um, and then we laid over in Beijing on the way back for just like 72 short hours. Um, went and saw Mao's tomb, Tiananmen Square. A lot of random sleeping people <laughs> on the street oh, in China. Oh, man. What, where, I saw something about that. Oh, like online somewhere? Yeah, like they all, like a lot of people there sleep in the in public. Yeah, I don't know what the Chinese version of a siesta is, but they really love it there. Now, why, where the hell did I uh, read about that? There's some sort of... It's like a cultural thing. People just go to bed in public. Yeah, yeah I, I and these I people think. aren't homeless. I know, I know. Yeah, they're definitely not like sleeping on the sidewalk. Well, they are, but they're not <laughs> without a home. It was probably like a, a gallery of photos of like, uh, where was this again? This was in Beijing. In Beijing, yeah, just this was at people Square. sleeping yeah. outside. Like, so weird. Like people with like, you know, construction workers were sleeping, yeah. like men, women, children just on the sidewalk. Very strange, but weird. kind of jealous. Because you would yeah. never do that here. You would never, it would only be by accident or if you passed out or if you're homeless. Yeah, and then you'd wake up without anything, anything. on. <laughs> like you'd be naked. Someone would take like an X-Acto knife and carve out your wallet and yeah. do that, all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. I'd, I'd be nervous about that, just falling asleep on the subway even. Oh my God, that's the worst place to fall. So you're better off falling asleep in Central Park yeah. in a field <laughs> yeah. than you are in a, on a subway I've car. I've never done that before, but... No, You're lucky really if you popular. wake up with your clothes on. Oh, but the smog in Beijing mm. was the worst. That set you back a couple of years, I bet. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, like I, I didn't experience this myself, but a friend that I talked to who spent a little time there during the Olympics said that after a week uh, of being there, he would like, you know, like after a full day of walking around, he would wipe his face with oh, a napkin black. and it would be black yeah. or gray. Yeah. You know, like you'd spit out black loogies after oh, a while, my. like you had been smoking cigarettes. I mean, that's probably the equivalent of what you're actually doing there. Yeah. It was crazy. So we actually had a layover in Beijing on the way to Singapore. It was like a 14-hour flight, then a two-hour layover, then seven hours to Singapore. But you know how normally when you touch down, you can sort of start seeing the tarmac, right? Like you can see, oh, we're like five minutes away and we're descending. Mm. Um, when we got into Beijing, I had no idea that we were about to land until the wheels touched the ground. Oh, my God. Like you couldn't even see the tarmac. It was always a, fog, a yeah. fog. Yeah, it was <laughs> insane. Crazy. It looked like San Francisco at... 6 p.m. every day when the fog starts yeah, rolling yeah, in, yeah. which is so weird because it really affects the weather as well. Like, the, I think the weather would have been a lot hotter there had the cloud and the smog not been blocking the sun. That's terrible. Yeah, yeah that's and it was impossible to get, like, really good photos and everything like that. We went up to the top of the Great Wall of China, and even then we still weren't above the smog line. Oh, that's gross. So, so you're from Southern California. How would you compare it to L.A. smog? Oh, I mean, L.A. smog is visible, but... To like varying degrees. It's oh, bad, right. but it's not like you like a haze. You don't have to cut mm. through it. Yeah. The way it sounds like you have to cut through it over in there. In Beijing, it's crazy. I, it looks like you're living in a smokestack. That's all really the time. That's really Disgusting. Like people straight up wearing, like not only those masks, you know, like the medical masks the that sores, fit over your ears, mm -hmm. but straight up gas masks. Like we saw a guy, didn't have a chance to snap a photo, but a guy rode his bike past us and he was wearing a full on gas mask. That's really frightening. Yeah. yeah is. Why like, is it? Is there? I can't believe that. Is anyone doing anything about that? I don't know how they would reverse it at this they point. They just have like guys with vacuum cleaners. Yeah. Sort of like, <laughs> like 24 7. You know, I don't know. It was so bad while we just were there. Sucking up the air. Mm hmm. It's really bad. You might as well smoke cigarettes while you're there. It can't be any. I mean, you, you have any no more choice. Harm. Yeah. It seems like you have no choice. It's crazy. And then the Damn. smoking culture there, speaking of cigarettes, is really bad. Like the on top of the smog. On top of the smog, to the point that every time we were either leaving or coming from the Beijing airport, some people were actually smoking on the airplane. No. At least one instance of you know, like smelling smoke on the no. airplane every time we were going into Beijing. What? Yeah, it, I couldn't believe Seriously? that. I, I want people to write in and see if they experienced the same thing. I thought it was a fluke until we came back to Beijing. Um, you know, from Korea. And you could smell, you know, like your nose starts yeah, tingling yeah, when course. someone is smoking. Clearly, it was somebody who couldn't handle a 14-hour flight without lighting up and taking like a single drag in the bathroom yeah. or something. 
and we didn't actually see any smoke. There was no physical signs of it. If you do that uh, on a U.S. flight, you get arrested. Yeah, like yeah. you get court-martialed. Crime. It's a yeah. it's like a felony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't believe this. And it was like to the point where I thought they were going to make an announcement to remind people that you couldn't smoke as if those tiny lights that are everywhere on an yeah. airplane aren't enough. It, no one said anything. And it was like, man, there's only two bathrooms on this freaking plane. Like you should be able to tell when someone comes out and there's like a plume of smoke. Yeah, of course. It wasn't even like an e-cigarette or anything. No. It was like actual It was straight cigarette. up smoke. Yeah, like you what could disgusting. smell it. What and it was hell? like that for 15 minutes. It was like multiple people Why were just that? going into the bathroom. What the hell's going on over there? I don't know. It, it reminded me of like, man, there was a time where you could actually smoke legally yeah. on an airplane. Yeah. A time when none of us were alive. Can you believe, <laughs> like when, when did that stop happening? In the mid-70s? No, I, I, I want to say when I was really young, I remember it because oh, I, I remember the uh, the little Ash the ashtrays in the in the armrest. No. You could flip them up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah, remember yeah. Well, too. I remember we talked about this recently. They keep the ashtrays in the bathroom yeah. still to this day because if someone actually does smoke, you don't want them to put it out. They don't want them to throw it in the trash mm. and start a fire. <laughs> right, but right. That's still so. You do remember like smelling I, I, smoke on a plane? Yeah, when you were yep, a kid? yep. I remember definitely smoking. I can't remember if I ever saw anyone, but I was a, a little kid. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If if, oh man, I can't remember that at all. But I, I mean, I remember smoking in other places, right? Uh, in like restaurants or like a mall, like, like a shop. Oh yeah, I remember mall. that. Yeah. I remember even dance clubs. Like you could smoke. You just oh, yeah. come out smelling like oh, cigarettes. Yeah. 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 That's <laughs> recent. Even, that's like ten years. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense to have a non-smoking section on an airplane, right? I mean, that's such an enclosed environment. The like, whole airplane yeah, going to get unless they have polluted. their own ventilation system. I guess it's not unsafe either. It's just no. It's like, just gross. A bad it, like. Yeah, flight well, think quality about, like, for everybody Think about all else. that recycled air and all it's that. It's dry already. You know, it's like a tight, confined space. It's no. stale. It's stinky. No. What the hell are you bringing cigarette smoke into the mix for? Some mm. fool on the airplane was, was, was not being very smart. I mean, this is in 1945 where everyone and their mother smoked cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but know? it doesn't matter if you're like The pilots anyway. are smoking. The stewardess and stewardess, yeah, they're smoking. Yeah. The babies are smoking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right like, and everything's in black and white. That was a controversy in China, too. You remember that video of the baby smoking? Oh, yeah. That Did you see out? baby smoking? I didn't see that this time, unfortunately. But Man. might as well have. My eyes definitely started watering and getting dry when we got off yeah. the airplane. It's like basically going to Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like all of Beijing is a huge Las Vegas. <laughs> oh, and we know how awful Las Vegas is. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing, too, is that, I don't know, like, you you guys are obviously more traveled, well traveled than me. But to me, all the big cities that we visited—Beijing, Singapore, and then like Seoul—yeah, a lot of them just look the same. They all sort of look like New York. You know, like a big city is a big city. You know, like varying degrees of restaurants and things like that. Sure. But in terms of neon signs, like uh, you know, corporate presence and things like that, it's like. I mean, you didn't like go, you go to, to a New third York. world country. Yeah, like if we had gone to like Vietnam or something like that. It is Vietnam a third world country? Certainly, yeah. yeah like certainly, you know, yeah. You'd probably notice it, but I don't know. We got out to the country a little bit for some hikes and stuff, but for the most part, we were we were in the city. Okay. It was tough not having a phone though. I'll oh you right. That. So you. What have you guys done when you went on vacation? I mean, that's got to be the mm. hardest part. Uh, when I was in Europe, I. Um, you borrowed a phone. Yeah, I had a GSM phone. It was fine. It was like no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Popped in a SIM card. Oh, you had to I buy got. a SIM card when you yeah, get there? Yeah, for like, you know, 20 euro. Oh, and it lasted done. me like 10 days. I was fine. What about you? I uh, I switched my plan to an international plan like every time I've went out. Mm-hmm. And then like it charged me a little bit more. Or, or I just do Wi-Fi whenever I can. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a smart so thing. I should have borrowed a phone from Brian. I mean, yeah, he's we have right like here a, in the office. An endless supply of, <laughs> yeah. of international phones. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I assumed in Korea they would have Wi-Fi hotspots everywhere, and they do. Like, Korea technologically is, like, way ahead yeah. of us right now. They sure. have super fast internet speeds. Same with Singapore, really fast. Um, and then what's really cool is in Korea, it's the same as Japan. You can pay for everything using either your phone or, like, a multi-pass style yeah. thing. Like, you pay for uh, public transportation, bus, subway, or a taxi. You can buy food or whatever, like cigarettes. It's just so easy. Yeah. Why do we not have that? Yeah, yeah. It was really easy to latch onto public Wi-Fi there, too. I feel like in New York, I would either not trust it or they just wouldn't be available. I don't know. Have you ever yeah, gone around I, doing that? I haven't done that. I, I, I have this th- stigma with, like, free Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know? Yeah, It's just anytime. like, no, I don't want to do that. Someone's, you know, sniffing. Yeah. I figure that probably happened a little bit, but 
what are you gonna do? Yeah. So um, in Singapore, I, I mean, in Korea, one thing I noticed was a lot of people watching TV on their phones. So like everybody has Samsung, like that's the huge brand there, obviously. Mm. And they're huge, you know, like those galaxies are gigantic. They have like notes and stuff. Yeah, they're all notes, but you'll see a lot of people with antennas coming out of the headphone jack. What? Which is really weird. Like it kind of like set me back it was like a weird hmm. thing in the past yeah, was, yeah they're obviously picking up analog tv signals is that what they're doing they're watching tv on their phones but it wasn't like a digital thing it wasn't like streaming so the tv's just the monitor i think yeah the phone's and the just converter the yeah. yeah i'm assuming wow. i didn't ask anybody but you'll see that a lot it's really bizarre you like any the photos of that? and everything no. uh, i didn't take a picture of it all right yeah. so yeah that was really cool um in beijing last thing i want to say is like we uh we wanted to go to this restaurant Anyone who visits Beijing, I want them to go and let me know how this is. But there's a bunch of North Korean themed restaurants there, all like Pyongyang themed restaurants. They're like medieval times in China. What do you mean North Korea themed? Weird sounding, right? Yeah. What does that mean? So, so I it's guess all like scary. Yeah. There's no food. There's no food, and everyone <laughs> just like cries yeah. inside. I don't understand. They kill your whole family <laughs> way out the door. All right. Um, no, like it sounds weird, but. If you've ever seen videos of like the uh, like North Korean processions or like uh, ceremonies, performances, so do, do they like, like kids playing guitar, they parody and, like, women it? dancing? Is that it's sort of a parody, but because it's they're not, not comedy. It's de it's definitely not comedy. It's more theater. It's like um, I don't know, like Buffalo Bills or Medieval Times here. Because I'm trying like to, entertainment. I'm trying to understand how they position it. Yeah, because obviously they're not proud of it. Yeah. It's, or are they? I think it's supposed to be like a disturbing thing. I know like a lot of North Korean defectors eventually make their way into Beijing or just China. But yeah, I'm not sure like what the point is of it. It's still like or is disturbing it them just being like, you think it's right weird now. here, get a load of these guys. Yeah, is like this is still going on. <laughs> is that how it works? I don't... Yeah, it'd be weird if it was like a period thing, like where, oh yeah, this is like a Old West theme show, but this is happening in 2014. Because so it sounds kind of like they're borderline celebrating it. Yeah, it's weird. So they have like kids playing guitar in unison, women dancing, and they like serve you food and things like that. I saw one photo of the inside of one of these restaurants and they have like huge wooden telephone poles, like the old style ones, Yeah, with splinters coming off of them and then missing persons. Uh, like, that's weird yeah missing persons mm. flyers that what are all tacked and stapled what to what the it. hell is that so weird yeah um, we didn't get a chance to do that because we went for duck instead but I want to know if anyone's been to one of those okay and yeah, there's a few locations is there any difference as far as like North Korean food like do they have different traditions or anything yeah so like one of the popular North Korean foods is I think I'm probably pronouncing it wrong but it's dust. called naengmyeon oh okay <laughs> yeah just air <laughs> sawdust um but yeah it's called naengmyeon which is it's, it's kind of strange to uh to us because it's cold soup noodles that doesn't that's, that's but like okay. ice there's yeah. like like ice flakes inside the soup and then Weird. they put like buckwheat noodles inside with um anything noodle like asian pears too. and and celery and not yeah. celery like zucchini and things like that okay um and then i'm not sure what else they have in north korea but i'm sure that's it that's all that's gotten out yeah <laughs> good old rice and water <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um but yeah like i want to hear from people if they've been to one of those north korean places because it sounded pretty crazy yeah right on yeah all right cool. so it was a successful trip it was a good trip yeah it was like both relaxing and super stressful at the same time stressful because you you were just like you were don't speak the language element, yeah. yeah like did you do you guys ever like go up to people and just like point at stuff on your phone we were doing that a lot yeah, yeah i mean i haven't i haven't really been to a place where there's not a sizable portion of the population that speaks either yeah. english or bad english mm -hmm. right right and that was mostly europe like i thought we would be totally out of luck in like brussels mm -hmm. and all those amsterdam they speak english Amst like, like everyone speaks english yeah so i figured it would be that way in Asia, pretty much everywhere. In Korea and Singapore, it was really easy to talk to people because uh, students learned English all the way up through high school. But in Beijing, I was super surprised. I mean, it's like the capital, they had the Olympics there, big business city, nobody spoke English. Interesting. And I don't speak any Mandarin except for like, where's the bathroom? Right. Which helps very little. You're doing that a lot. Yeah. I swear, like traveling through Asia too, 75% of the time you're just pointing at English. Yeah. Like, at that's English? That's all it is. Yeah, like funny, like, like, you know, Trans lost in translation yeah, stuff. Exactly. What, what was the best? This example? was the best. I took a photo of this because I wanted to show you guys. I went into a convenience store and they had condoms by Durex, a name brand, but the style was jeans. 
They were. <laughs> I like how it also says "love sex" yeah. above the yeah. Durex logo. So weird. Well, that sounds really uncomfortable to have a denim condom. Yeah. And there's even like a button there too with like the picture of the denim. That is so weird. This isn't like a small company. I'm assuming this is maybe like bootleg because Durex has an American arm too. <laughs> You'd think they would vet this shit, but button fly condom. Yeah, let me put this jean condom on, girl. <laughs> I don't feel anything. Yeah. Do you? Jean or leather tonight? What do you think? It's just em- emulating a lap dance, I think, yeah. is what that's doing. That would hurt so bad. Oh, that's going to chafe my willy. Yeah. I don't know who would hurt for more. At least take the button off first, right? Get your get in line for a denim condom for so sure. So bad. Well, there's three of them in there, so if you break one, somehow <laughs> you can tear jeans open. The best part about that, though, is you can dry clean them when you're done. <laughs> when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was like a good one. We saw like a bunch of people just wearing t-shirts that had like weird slogans on it. Oh, like I've, there's a subreddit. Of oh, there's like weird, there's gotta yeah, be like yeah, a yeah. million. I, I could start like a a million zines they're just for so, angry. They're so strange. Yeah. What, what, do you recall? Oh yeah. There's one? like uh, we saw one guy that just said like had a shirt that said California boyfriend on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh we saw a shirt for sale that just said fucking summer. <laughs> this is so weird. Where like, does that come from? Really bizarre stuff like that. I have no idea. <laughs> Did it oh, it's just such a cultural divide. Yeah. It was really weird. There's, yeah. We saw like a, a sign summer. on a menu. It was like a picture <laughs> of like a, a menu item you could get at a restaurant. Yeah. And it said griddle dirty. <laughs> that was the only description. Just griddle dirty. <laughs> Not dirty griddle. Oh. Yeah, so weird. Stuff like that. It's English just, is amazing. Yeah. Like half of it's just pointing. Ha! Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fucking summer. It's funny. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. And then Beijing does this at a lot of places too. One of the restaurants we went to, um, because they know that foreigners are really paranoid about dirt and germs. Yeah. And I'm sure the locals are too. They actually shrink wrap your entire dishware set your cup your plate spoon fork all that stuff they shrink wrap uh each set every time Hmm. so it's kind of weird you got to like pop tags on your dishware so that's actual that's like a plate yeah but that's not like brand new that paper yeah they used that before but seems kind of a waste of plastic not very green who am i to say maybe that's why the whole city is covered in a cloud of (laughs) shit yeah perhaps (laughs) have no ozone layer (laughs) maybe maybe, maybe that's why this uv rays directly (laughs) penetrate (laughs) (laughs) they burn this after me too they burn the plastic that's how they're heating the city yeah you can smoke it plastic yeah oh indoor smoking everywhere in china too like no Why not? If you go to like <laughs> McDonald's well. or like a five-star Michelin-rated restaurant, you're smoking. In That's not surprising at all. Screw though. it. That's yeah. the slogan of China. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Cigarettes are cheaper than water there. That's a fact. Like Cigarettes wow. are cheaper a, than water? A pack of cigarettes is cheaper than bottled water. How much is uh, our cigarettes? Like $1.50 or so, and then they wow. charge like $2 because they 20 know. And 20 cigarettes? Like well, like maybe year? like a dollar. It depends on what brand you get. And there's cigarettes everywhere too, like whole stores dedicated to selling cartons of cigarettes. Yeah. Um, the thing is, they really capitalize on the price of bottled water because they know tourists just can't. They can't go without it. Yeah. Well, it's amazing that we have such a different philosophy. Like, there's yeah. a lot of ass backwards cultural things in the U.S., but I kind of agree on the whole cigarette thing. Mm-hmm. No, I mean New York cigarettes. I think this is going to surprise a lot of even like domestic listeners. Fourteen seventy five for a pack of cigarettes. Enough. Here. Same. Yeah, so, that's really so over there they just don't seem to think that it's... you can get a carton of cigarettes from the duty free part of the airport for twenty bucks anywhere in Asia. It's nuts. Um, but yeah, speaking of income disparity, that was the biggest, like one of the biggest things we were taking note of too. Is like especially in Beijing, like uh, the place that we stayed was sort of the uh, I'd say like middle class area. Yeah. But a block away there was a Ferrari store in one direction. And then in the other direction it was complete poverty. Like yeah. you know, living in like basically tenement housing. Yeah. Um and there were like we had to worry about scams everywhere too. I don't know if anyone else from Beijing experiences this kind of thing, but before we were doing planning and reading stuff online, a lot of people were warning us about scams. Like and what? we almost got scammed a few times we were there. Like so one time we took a rickshaw bike this is like basically a motor scooter with uh, like a uh, seat attached to it yeah. in the back. Mm-hmm. And we took that to get around because it was cheaper than taking a taxi. And before you get in, you show them a destination. We just pointed at our Airbnb on the phone. Be like, we're going here. And the guy was like, okay, 40, 40 yuan, which is the currency there. And uh, we were like, okay, cool. You know, whatever. That's like 
you know, less than six bucks. So we get in and when we get to our destination, when we get out, the guy actually gets off his bike and he sort of like puffs up at us. <laughs> he's like, oh, it's 40, 40. And he points at each of us. He's uh, like, 40 each. And we were like, no, nah, you didn't say that, you know? And he was like, no, no, 40, 40, kind of getting a little bit more hostile. Right, right, right. And at that point, I was like, man, if we were in a taxi, that'd be terrifying. He could lock the doors, drive off. I have sure. no idea where he's going. Right. What's he going to do with you, though? I mean, we were in public. <laughs> we were in, like, sure. you know, a touristy area. So I wasn't that scared. Right. But, you know, he was bigger than me and he was getting angry. Like, that was probably his intimidation tactic. But yeah. we were like, yeah, we don't have anything. Yeah. You know, that's all we have is this 40 you want. He's like, okay, he let us go. And then that happened again. Like we took it again and it was a different guy, same stunt. Hmm. So you got to watch out for things like that. I think anytime you're traveling, like I'm sure foreigners that come to New York. I was going to say. It, get I, jacked all the time. I don't know about like taxi cabs, but well, who maybe knows? like, like a unmarked car or whatever it is, you yeah. know. But yeah, I would imagine it's equally as intimidating coming to New York yeah. for the first time. For sure. I mean, you could get taken advantage of by anybody, like charging you the wrong price. By or anybody. Hmm. Anyway. Dude, one thing that we read too is that when you're in Tiananmen Square, you shouldn't you should be wary of random strangers that come up to you and either ask for you to take their photo. Or one popular scam we read about was oftentimes tourists will get approached by a seemingly innocent Chinese girl, like a local. And she'll be chatting you up with like sort of broken English. And you think that, oh, this is like a friendly person that's like trying to show me around or whatever. Right. So you buddy up with them. And eventually after you sort of talk for a while. She kills you. She kills you. Just stabs you in the stomach. <laughs> Terrible scam. Yeah, that's, that's seem, I don't know why they do that. <laughs> Not very fun. <laughs> this city. No, but like after a while, she'll, be, she'll offer to take you to a tea house yeah. and be like, hey, I want to show you to this place, you know, and she'll take you to a local tea house and you'll sample all these different types of teas and drink stuff. And about halfway through, she'll excuse herself to go to the restroom. Meanwhile, the proprietors give you the bill. And it's some astronomical amount. It's like, you know, like 200. That's American a scam dollars. everywhere in the world. Yeah. And then you're like, wait. I was with, and you yeah, turn yeah. to the side. She's she's, she's gone. gone. She's gone. They lock the doors, and then two like you know thugs basically blockade. Right, like, block the door. No, that's a scam here too. You've heard about that oh, happening yeah. before? That's a big scam. It's called something. Really? Yeah. That's like a popular con. It's, called, it's got like some Ocean's Eleven name to it. Hmm, yeah. Now I'm wondering if that's actually ever happened. I should snoop it's a, this. It's a no. It's definitely a big scam. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Or like uh, one thing. It we, happens a lot in Europe too. I, I, one thing I read here that happens a lot is like people will bump into you and then drop a pre-broken phone. Right. And be like, dude, you just broke my phone. Right. You owe me two hundred right. bucks. They do that with sunglasses a lot too. Yeah. Man. Con artists, man. It's what makes the world go round. <laughs> yeah, we're the wrong profession. I think we're doing something a little more productive. Yeah. One thing's for sure. After going on a trip like this, I am very eager to help anyone that looks re even remotely lost in New York. Right. And they're like, I can't trust this guy. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like before I would kind of like always be like, ah, I don't want to give directions to anybody. Right. But now I'm totally sympathetic. I still, I still maintain that that state of mind where it's like, mm, you're on your own. Really? Sometimes. Just read the map. You'll be fine. Just, I mean, it's a grid. It's numbers. It's easy. <laughs> yeah. Get into a yellow cab. That's it. Right. That's it. Get into a yellow cab. You'll be fine. Just make sure it's not a gypsy cab. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you'll be you're fine. fine. Right? Yeah. Good tips for travelers. Well, this has been great, man. Yeah. Thanks. I had a lot of fun. It was good to be like on vacation for a little bit, but now glad to be back it's changed you as a person for the better i can already see it kind of feel more worldly you i'm eager to go on more trips you're that's more, definitely a big change you, you've expanded your horizons you're more culturally aware yeah you have more respect for other cultures kind of a little bit <laughs> and now you're uh, smoking 10 packs a day definitely so if you guys want cigarettes i'm selling them <laughs> lucy's for everybody i guarantee you that's like a big thing people trying to smuggle in cigarettes oh yeah me. yeah damn i should have gotten that racket yeah, going i don't know about that <laughs> Get held up at customs, cavity searches. Mm. You don't want to deal with that. Ooh, security's bad. That's a bad too. weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, welcome back, man. Thanks, thanks. All right, and we'll uh, finish up the week, and uh, you'll be around. You're not going anywhere for a while? Mm, not for a little bit. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for us, guys. Let us know what you think about Justin's world travels. Yeah. Yeah. People, everyone, you, you see, you know why you made it okay? Why? Because you had the universal Phantom of the Opera sign of world peace. Yeah. And wherever you went, people saw your hat and they're like, oh, he's clearly they a good it. person. Oh, yeah. before I forget, yeah, one last thing. Up? I wanted to give a shout out to a listener in Korea. Oh, right on. Uh, that came up and introduced himself to me, our buddy Mike. Yeah, Mike. I hope he's listening right now. It was amazing. It was right after the wedding in Seoul, and me and Pini were just trying to figure out directions like 80% of the time. Did Mike help you out? No. Oh, 
okay. Well, we didn't ask him, <laughs> but right. um, we kind of sat and talked for a little bit. He just introduced himself as like a longtime listener. Sick. It was amazing. So, what's up, Mike? Thanks hey, for Mike. listening, buddy. Right on, nice. dude. Yeah. Uh, shoot us an email, the 404 at CNET.com, and follow us on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, Twitter. Blah, 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 blah. All right, we're back here tomorrow with a brand new show. Until then, I'm Jeff Bacalar. I'm Justin New. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 Show. High tech, low brow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>